Hello everyone, Raf here from BNC Camera. Capturing the best photo will rely heavily on the settings you choose. You're going to need more than just a fancy camera. Understanding each of the building block settings for your camera will set your photography apart from the others. Shutter speed is one of those building blocks. When you can completely understand how shutter speed affects your photos and how it works, you'll see an improvement in the quality of your photos. To reiterate, and for those who have stumbled across our little guides for the first time, the three building blocks are ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, simply called the exposure triangle. In this particular video, we'll be discussing shutter speed. Alrighty, so what exactly is shutter speed? Before you start playing around with your shutter speed, it is best to understand what it actually does. Your shutter speed is the amount of time that the camera shutter is open. Think of it as a door. The longer you have the door open, the longer you can see what's on the outside. When you close the door, you can no longer see. Putting it in layman's terms, the longer your shutter is open, the longer your camera can capture the scene. Inversely, the shorter the shutter is open, the faster you'll be able to capture images. So how is shutter speed exactly measured? Shutter speeds are gauged in fractions of a second. Each shutter speed has its own purpose and gives off a different look. Numbers such as 1 500th of a second represent a faster speed. The smaller numbers like 1 8th represent a slower speed. The most common and average shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. Now typically, speeds slower than 1 60th of a second will produce blurry images. When you're shooting under low light conditions, you can usually opt for slower shutter speeds, but at the expense of your camera capturing blurry motion. Most cameras will also let you measure your shutter speed in full seconds to allow for more time. This is what you typically use for your long exposure style shooting. If you opt for a slower shutter speed than 1 60th of a second, you will need to utilize a tripod. Your tripod will ensure that your camera stays as still as possible to reduce the chances of a blurred photograph. Alrighty, you're probably wondering what is the best shutter speed for portraits. When taking portraits, you'll need to stick with a faster shutter speed. Doing this will ensure your subject isn't blurred and you can clearly see all of their features. Unless, of course, you're trying to be creative by doing a blurred, double exposed image. When taking portraits without a flash during the day, you'll want to stick with a shutter speed of 1 15th of a second on a tripod. How do you know which shutter speed to choose if you aren't taking a portrait photo? You still might be wondering how to actually pick the speed you need. First, you'll need to determine what the photo you are taking needs, and each photography style will require a different shutter speed. For example, a sports and or wildlife photographer will need a different shutter speed than a photographer that's taking photos of a newborn. Your subject's overall movement is what will determine the shutter speed. If your goal is to freeze your subject in action, you're going to want to bump that shutter a bit faster. Here's another case example. You're at a sports event and trying to capture a clear photograph of the basketball player dribbling down the court. A fast shutter speed will help you freeze frame that action, whereas if you use a slow shutter speed, you can better convey motion on how fast a player is moving with the blur. More than likely, you'll need to do a bit of experimentation to get the right aesthetic. Again, just consider the look and the tempo of the scene. Is it fast paced or is it slow paced? Would you like to convey motion or are you wanting to freeze a moment in time? Also, take into consideration the focal length. The shutter speed will determine the clarity of your photograph, but it will also play a massive role in the focal length. When you need long focal lengths, you'll need a faster shutter speed. If your camera doesn't have image stabilization, stick to the shutter speed numbers that exceed the lens length. So if you use a 200mm lens, you'll need to aim for a shutter speed of around 1 250th of a second. We'll go ahead and throw a quick shutter speed cheat sheet chart up on screen for you right now, which you can also find on our blog pages on our website. While you're glancing at the chart, I'll provide some hypotheticals for you for some of the shutter speed options. 1 500th of a second and up. This shutter speed works best for wildlife, sports, and action photography. 1 250th of a second. Useful for general purpose shooting if you want to free something that isn't moving too fast. 1 1 25th of a second. Good for fast moving subjects, but also if you'd like to convey a sense of motion. 1 60th of a second. This is the standard shutter speeds on cameras and what you'll mostly find on standard portrait work. 1 30th of a second. Use this to pan fast moving subjects. 1 15th of a second. A shutter speed for panning and putting that much more emphasis on motion blur. 1 8th of a second. This shutter speed will for sure blur fast moving subjects. 1 4th of a second. The shutter is so slow that it will blur people when walking. 1 half of a second. You will be able to make fast flowing water into a blur. Hopefully with this video, you now have a better understanding of shutter speed and how it can affect your photographs and overall image. When you have the time, be sure to experiment and mess around with your shutter speed settings to see how exactly it'll affect your image. Also, bear in mind your exposure triangle. 
If you're shooting fast, make sure you balance your f-stop and ISO accordingly so you don't have an underexposed photo. Same goes for your long exposures. You wouldn't want all that hard work of doing light paintings only for it to be an overexposed nightmare. Thanks again for tuning in. If you found the video helpful, as always, liking and subscribing will help us out plenty so we can produce more informational content to you guys in the future. This is Raf from BNC Camera, and I'll see you in the next video.